I'm not really a ride or die chick. I have questions. Where are we going? Why do I have to die? Can we get food on the way? I mean, tacos, who doesn't love tacos? Anyway, hello friends, welcome back. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Courtney. Today I'm gonna to be doing a follow-up to my 2016 ride or die video, AKA like Holy Grail products. I recently saw Jen Loves Reviews. I love her channel, you should check her out. I'm gonna put a link up here for you to go to her channel and in my description box below to see her ride or die follow-up but I thought it'd be a fun thing for me to do as well. So I filmed that ride or die video in August of 2016. It's interesting to me to see what products have changed and which have stayed the same. Number one is my face primer. In 2016, my, my ride or die holy grail face primer was the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. That still holds true today, unless I'm wearing a water-based foundation. If so, then I go for the First Aid Beauty Coconut Smoothie Primer or the Too Faced Hangover Primer. But like for my regular everyday foundation, what I like to use is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. And I mix that with my Holy Grail Foundation, which is the Eden Minerals Nordic Veil Foundation. So at the time when I filmed that video, my Holy Grail Foundation was the Lucy Minerals Custom Blend of Foundation, which was like, I think, Snow White in light or beige or whatever but they made a custom mix for me and i liked that foundation but i had to press it like um put it into a pressed powder form to be able to apply it or it would apply too heavily for me so eventually i gave up on it even though it's probably one of the nicest powder foundations i found it was just too finicky for me to work with my holy grail foundation now is the eden minerals nordic veil in the shade Yorin, j-o-r-u-n-n I love this because I do not have to add white to it. It is more full coverage than I like, but what I do to thin it out is mix it with the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer, which makes it a little bit thinner in coverage and glowy. And I feel like, this, I'm wearing it today, and I feel like when I have it on, like it's pretty seamless, it looks really good. My skin looks flawless, but like skin, I don't feel like I look like I'm wearing heavy cakey makeup. Sometimes when my seborrheic dermatitis is acting up, I'll see some cakiness around the nose or maybe in between the eyebrows, but overall, I think it looks beautiful on my skin and I absolutely love it. The only thing that I would say that is bad about that foundation is that because it's a Swedish brand, it has a very limited shade range. I feel very lucky that I actually have, you know, a foundation I can wear that I don't have to add white to because it's such a rarity for me. If the Eden Minerals foundation didn't exist, the um, other foundation I would be able to wear without adding white would be Huda Beauty's Faux Filter Foundation and Milkshake, but I hate the fragrance of that foundation and it is more full coverage. It's another foundation I have to mix with the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. I also really like the Cover FX Total Cover Cream in N0, and that one works okay, but it's not my favorite. I really, really love the Eden Minerals. So next on the list is concealer, and in 2016, I was in love with my Kat Von D Locket Concealer in the shade L1. <laughs> it's 2018, I'm still in love with the Kat Von D L1 Concealer. Now, to be fair, I don't conceal very often, and when I do, I really do try to use like the point method where you use like a very, very tiny brush and kind of dot the concealer on so that it keeps like the pigmentation. I don't really like to do wide strokes of concealer all over my face. That's just not my style because I prefer my skin to look more natural rather than be like full face heavy foundation. But this concealer in my opinion is awesome because you can put it on top of foundation, under foundation, use it with powder foundation, pretty much anything and it just looks good. So I love it. So next on my list is setting powder. And in 2016, I was obsessed with the NARS Light Reflecting Loose Setting Powder. I still have some of, it, some of it in my collection because I haven't finished all that I own. But because no, NARS is no longer cruelty free, I've stopped using it anytime I'm on camera because I don't want to be promoting a non cruelty free product. My go-to setting powder these days is the Laura Geller Balance and brighten in the shade porcelain. The reason I love this is that I can use it, I actually like to use it with um, this little like sponge from Real Techniques and basically use it just to set my foundation. Again, I used it today. I feel like my skin looks amazing and it just gives me like a nice glow. I do have to make sure that I'm wearing some sort of a foundation beneath it because this product picks up on whatever your undertones are. So if you have olive undertones, it's kind of probably pick up on that. For me, I have a red overtone from Rosacea. So if I don't have something to neutralize out that red overtone, it picks up on that. But wearing a found, like a the foundation I have on today, it just everything is neutral, so it just reflects neutral back, which I really love. And I will get all day wear with my current like foundation routine, which I love. You know, so basically for 14 or 16 hours, my skin will look fabulous, and I think that, and I think that is absolutely amazing. Next on my list is eye primer, and in 2016, I was obsessed with Too Faced Shadow Insurance, which let me be fair, I've been obsessed with Too Faced Shadow Insurance since at least 2008. 
However, in late 2017, I learned that if I set my eye primer with Milani's Prep Set Go Translucent Setting Powder, I can wear a wider variety of eyeshadow primers. So right now, I pretty much bounce between two different eyeshadow primers. I really love Urban Decay's Primer Potion. I like the original. I like this shade, which is Enigma. I also like Eden. And I've been absolutely loving the Color Science Total Eye like 3-in-1 SPF 37. I'm wearing that one today. This stuff is awesome because basically it has like a neutral peach tone and it will help correct dark circles under your eyes. Plus it has the SPF in it and it works really well as a primer. I'm gonna put a link to my video where I use this so you can see exactly how it works. So that's one that's definitely changed. So in 2016, I was obsessed with the Urban Decay Bronzer and Sunkissed. Not that I wear bronzer very much, but if I was gonna wear a bronzer, it's gonna be an Urban Decay bronzer. Then I found the Physician's Formula Muramura Butter Bronzer and I became obsessed with this one. I love that it smells like a tropical vacation. It smells like coconuts and pina coladas. I don't know, I think it smells amazing. It also is a great color for my pale skin, so I can use this to warm up my complexion if I wanna do that, which again, I don't wear bronzer very often, but if I do, this is what I reach for. So next on my list is blushes, and in 2016, I was obsessed with the Urban Decay blushes. Guess what, I'm still obsessed with them. The only complaint that I have is that I don't have a cool beige blush from the Urban Decay blushes, so I'm hoping that they put out one of those shades. I've been trying to find that sort of perfect cool beige to put on my cheeks, and the closest that I have found really has been um, ColourPop's Aphrodisiac, and I also really like the Physician's Formula Plum Rose. So those are like my kind of like weird blush obsession thing going on, but I still love the Urban Decay blushes and I wear them all the time, so I absolutely, they're still on my holy grail list. So next on my list is highlighters, and I was obsessed with Notoriously Morbid's Osteomancy highlighter. I've since given that up in place of the Makeup Geek Celestial highlighter. I wear this product almost every day. You can see I've got considerable pan showing through here, which is kind of sexy. For my look today, I'm actually only wearing the Deuce by Juvia's Place. This color right here, which is Tarte. And I've got a little bit of Aromalie's Astara as sort of like a blush topper to kind of create my glow for the day. I feel very spring-like with like all of this pink on, but I wanted to do something different. So in 2016, I was absolutely obsessed with Ardell Demi Wispy Lashes. I'm still obsessed with Ardell Demi Wispy Lashes. Today, I'm actually wearing a new type of Ardell Lashes. These are the Magnetic Accent Lashes. I don't know if you can see, like this is what the packaging looks like for it. But I bought them to try them out. I also bought the other magnetic lashes that they make, which is the double wispies. But the problem with these is that they're a little bit too big for my eyes. So I've been trying to make the Ardell um, accent lashes work, and I think they work pretty well. They look so much better than the one-two lashes that I tried, which were like seventy-five dollars worth of crap. So Ardell has never let me down. I typically like to wear the the demi wispies, which look similar in style to this. They're just a slightly different length. Here, I've got a pack right here. I always cut them down a little bit to make them a better fit for the shape of my eyes. So in 2016, I was absolutely obsessed with the Urban Decay Naked Basics 1 palette, which is the little tiny palette. The reason for that is I always use the base shade Walk of Shame, and I also like some of the mattes in it. So now I would say my go-to mattes palette is the Urban Decay Naked Ultimate Basics palette. And I like using this because I use these colors with all of my brights. So that is why it's a go-to palette for me. Because people always ask, why would you say a neutrals palette is a go-to for you? Well, it's because I use it to complement my brighter colors. <laughs> so in 2016, I was absolutely obsessed with the Urban Decay Vice lipsticks. I am still obsessed with the Urban Decay Vice lipsticks. I'm wearing them today. I had some custom ones engraved. This one says Fira Nix. This one says witchcraft. And this one says cruelty free. I really think it's cool that Urban Decay was offering engraving for a while. I think they're still offering it, but I'm not 100% certain. So I figured when they were offering it, I might as well get mine engraved with some stuff that I like. All right, so in my previous ride or die video, I was obsessed with the Jouer liquid lipsticks. I still love them, but my number one liquid lipstick formula is the Sugar Pill liquid lipstick formula, and they finally expanded their shade range, so I bought a bunch more of these. This is the most com comfortable formula for me to wear on my lips. Now, Jouer is a close second, and then I have in third place Black Moon Cosmetics. So in 2016, I was obsessed with the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara. It's 2018, I am still obsessed with this mascara, although I started wearing it differently. I've been using the Smashbox Lash Primer 
to get some really, really, really good length, and then I go at it with the Perversion Mascara, and my lashes will be long enough to touch my eyebrows. So totally love this combo, totally obsessed with it. In 2016, I was obsessed with the Urban Decay High Color Gloss, like lip glosses. Now I'm obsessed with the Marc Jacobs lip glosses. I own three of them. I have Changes and Love Buzz, Oh no, this is uh, in Whip It, and I think my third one is Love Bit Buzz, but it's in another part of my room. So I really like these because they are comfortable to wear. They have enough pigment that they give me some color. Um, my, my hair doesn't get stuck in them. I just, I don't know, it's been surprisingly nice to put on a lip gloss that doesn't seem to get on my teeth and go all over my face. So I love them now. In 2016, I was absolutely obsessed with the Urban Decay lip pencils. Now I'm still obsessed with the Urban Decay lip pencils, but I also do use the Kat Von D lip pencils quite a bit. So between the two, I feel like I have the entire rainbow of colors covered that I need because Kat Von D has like the teals and the turquoise um, and the like purples, like has really, really good color colors of pencils that Urban Decay is missing. But I absolutely wouldn't turn down those colors in Urban Decay if they ever came out with them. And in 2016, I was absolutely obsessed with Urban Decay's All Nighter Spray. 2018, still obsessed. I like to use it to set my face, but I also use it to foil eyeshadow or to basically help to meld my makeup together and make it last all day. Sometimes what I'll do is spray it onto a beauty sponge like this and then carefully pat it onto my face to help set the makeup. But I love it, I think it's still awesome. So my perfume obsession from 2016 was Tokyo Milk Dark Tainted Love. Now, I know it's a couple years later, but I'm still obsessed with this scent. It's probably my favorite scent that you can walk into a Sephora and buy because I don't really like overly floral scents. I do like sweet scents. I like vanilla. Um, I like them to be a little bit like deeper and complex, but for whatever reason, that scent I think on me just smells amazing. So I still wear it quite frequently, usually at least two or three times a week. So last but not least is makeup brushes. And in 2016, I was obsessed with my Urban Decay Pro Makeup Brushes. And in 2018, I am still obsessed with those brushes, but I'm also pretty obsessed with my Sigma brushes that are perfect for hooded eyes. So those are the two brands that I use the most for brushes. I'll put a link to my recent Sigma video about brushes up here so you can check out the brushes I'm talking about. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed hearing what I was obsessed with in 2016 and whether or not I'm still obsessed with it in 2018. Please be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video entertaining and fun, please give it a thumbs up and share. I love it when you share my videos. It makes my day and it really helps me out. So thank you so much. I really, truly appreciate it. And if you haven't already, click on that little subscribe button down below and I'll see you in my next video.